Welcome back to the No Solid Podcast. Seriously, I like what? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know what we're talking about. I, uh, um, it's a full moon. Oh, pineapples. shit. Pineapples. Pineapples, that's my safe word. Pineapples, it's my safe word. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> Uh, oh shit! Here, let's do this. I feel bad because last time the freaking and uh, the oh, yeah. yeah. Oh no. I the is more on there. Yeah. And well, then we missed it. It looks like you're looking through a book, so I'll do the intro. Welcome to the back to the new Upsala podcast. We got all three of us here, and we. Christmas was just yesterday, if you celebrate Christmas, um, but Yule was last week, and we got New Year's coming up this weekend. Mm-hmm. What? This week. So I opened this book, and this was the first thing that came up. The elves. Oh. And then it fucking got into it real quick. Because I opened to this little glossary of shit. And it says, The Elf Dance, Will of the Wisps, Alphablot, Oberon, and Tatiana. Tatina? Tatiana? I don't know. Titania? Something like that. Images on doorposts. What the fuck? Yeah, anyways. Uh, we're not going to do that. So I thought about this today. Um, I... So something came to mind when I was like doing the dishes, actually, uh, you know, how we activate the runes through blood and everything according to the hob mall and, you know, it's a life source and all that shit, but you and me both inscribed, uh, the bind rune that one of our apprentices had, but we all had side effects, but we didn't use blood. So logically, I'm trying to come up with a a uh, connection to not blooding it, but still getting some of the side effects. And I have yeah. a somewhat conclusion. Yeah, let's go. What do you got? So here's my thing is when you write it down, you get 10% of what the energy would be portraying without the blood. So that's, that would describe and allow our symptoms when we had that bind rune. But when you blood it and you give it life source and everything, you get the full access. Okay. So here's my caveat for that. Do you know why books and grimoires and such were sometimes some of the more powerful ones? We'll go with that word. It's not necessarily accurate, but powerful grimoires that are out there are bound in human skin. Do you know why? I don't know the the human skin part, but I know, like, why grimoires are super like their embodiments of magic i know that yes so a grimoire for those that don't know is a catalog of spells or potions or different things why was going to pull his out and show the viewers not just the listeners that is his personal one i have mine but it is somewhere um somewhere else anyways they're bound in human skin, those ones in particular, because of the potency of that. Now, when we inscribed it on ourselves, we gave it that power. Intentionally or not, we gave it the power of our own life force. Now, I'm pretty sure you said you did it in Sharpie, right? Yeah. So, 
if you were to get a tattoo of a rune or a binder or a stave, would you consider that to be a blood? There you go. <laughs> Is that a blooded rune now? Oh yeah, it's one hundred percent because. Okay. The, the blood and everything going into the tattoo, the blood is actually getting infused with the ink, and right. that's where the the magical and the blooding aspect of it comes. Now, here's the crazy part. You know how many layers of skin a Sharpie goes through? I don't. Your blood, I'm going to have to, you guys can vet me if I'm wrong, but technically there are blood vessels and capillaries, I believe, in the second layer of skin. Okay. Pretty sure that's accurate. Because, like, if you scrape your hand or something, sometimes you'll get, like, the little bit of blood there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So, you put yours on your wrist, right? Yeah. Those veins are directly on the skin. There's a bunch of little capillaries that are... Pulling it out, mm -hmm. I think it's one or two, or two or three layers deep is where the capillaries start. But that ink is now touching the blood in those capillaries, okay. just from the sharpie. So technically, they were blooded in a minor way, maybe not the same way that we would submerge them or anything like that. Yeah, 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 I get you. But technically, they would have been blooded, and they're on your skin. So you carving it into your own skin, not carving with a knife, but yeah. carving it, would imbue your life force to it. It's just like in a tattoo. Essentially. Now, there's some, there is some difference there, and it oh, is yeah. a very different aspect. And I agree with what you're saying, but in this case, technically, those would be blooded in a sense. Okay. I didn't think about that. I, I, yeah, you learned something new. See, and I I can see where Rain Raven's trying to see that like that side step by yeah. still pulling something. Um, but if you are dealing with bind runes or whatever else on paper on things that aren't you or have blood in them, I think the idea is like, could you still draw a rune and get the power of a rune without blooding that exact symbol or that thing? So I took it more like you blood the runes because they are the runes with it, but I was almost going to say, but not necessarily blooding all bind runes, which not all bind runes need blood. There are a lot of them that do, uh, but the ones that don't aren't any less powerful or potent, depending on what they're doing, and they don't have any blood involved whatsoever. Um, so I can see where the representation or like the picture of a rune, I can see what you say, are, is there some power coming from that? Uh, I would say it depends on who's drawing it, who's wielding it, things like that. At that point, if if you're being a gothi in any stand in any form, you're being the conduit. If you're holding a rune, you are now being a conduit for that rune. It's a little bit more of a hard line than if like my brother were to pick up a picture of Gabo, and he would be nothing. Um, it may not be nothing, but it won't be that recognition at least. So I think it kind of comes down to what the intentions are with it, but. I would I would argue it still holds power. It still has the things. The thing with grimoires is if like you're doing everything in there right, you're showing all the steps, everything with it. If any of them just require the image of in a certain particular order, and I do that in that grimoire, that then is basically activating that in that grimoire. So you have all these spells and incantations and runes and bind runes that are constantly, basically, always on. Mm. Which is a weird concept because you have to then nullify and or not use them in that sense. So in the sense that it's, oh, just just drawing it and bring it to life. Yes, I would say so to a much larger, much smaller scale. Um, those that are uh, trying to avoid doing the bloodings, um, trying to avoid that kind of movement overall as a gothi, I would say if you are a gothi, you should be going 100% re-fucking regardless of what you think of it, and you should be bloodying that shit, because no one's going to come to a gothi that's 90% loaded and ready to go, when there's everyone else that's 100. But I would say, I would say the images, but I don't know. So, there's another cool thing that I read about. Um, in some grimoires, certain malicious or malevolent spells or whatever it is are bordered 
when other pages are new. Ordered as in like there's like a little a border error. on that page. Yeah. To maintain and contain the the yes. energies within it. Now yep. to make I would that was to make it as safe as possible. Let's say whatever it is on that in the grimoire page, I wouldn't use the back side of it. True. Uh, I would keep it, I would have it only on that page and that page alone. Nothing else is going to mess with that energy. Probably a good idea. It also would depend on if you get bleed through in that back page. Yeah, that's in true. But yeah, there's there's some really cool shit about so, how they order different spells and so why it was done. Yeah, bordering is a very good containment um, practice. Um, the one that I am going to show isn't isn't one that needs one necessarily, but it's one that is not should not be practiced in any sense. And so I have it in here for the knowledge sake, but there's a lot of bleed through kind of what you guys are saying. So like both sides are that way. It's very parchment esque paper. Um, so it's the simple name and in script and exactly like what it is, right? And of course, this is all in Eller Futh art, so good luck. Um, and then on the, I don't describe everything else. I I have like how to, what to, whatever else. And then to uh, Raindrake's point, on the back side is actually like basically what the steps are, what to do, why not to do it, and also how to accomplish it perfectly. So I have more of like a warning or a foreboding on the front saying, "Hey, you're about to open a door. Maybe don't." And then if they choose to, it's more on the back side on the exact like movements to do so. So um, like, some of them I actually do have. Uh, some of them I actually do have on the back page. So like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I'm like picturing it: is your grimoire is like the front page is like, all right, this is what this uh, stave or sigil is supposed to do. A binder, whatever input, anything is supposed to do, and then on the back side is like your history and what has happened after or during um, producing. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry, I was unmuted that whole time when I was looking through this then. Um, so, sorry, some do, some do not. Um, mine is more, if I can put it all on one, I will put it all on one, just for the sake of having more room. Okay. Um, but there is still a lot of bleed through that I've hit account. So for example, this is just like my opening page. So you can already see the other side bleeding through. This is not on this side, mm -hmm. right? And so you just take it to this first page, and it's bleeding through on that. It made a really cool effect. It was not intentional. No. Um, but from there, I had to learn, okay, I don't want everything bleeding through everything. So a few of them, um, if I can, I'll use different materials or writing sources to do these so they don't bleed through as aggressively. Um, but let's see where that one went. Uh, we'll take this one, for example. Um, oh, actually, <laughs> that same stupid one I just showed you, the other one. Um, but this was description, inscription, whatever, and then, like, don't fucking do it. Don't fucking do it. <laughs> just don't fucking do it. And that's all right. So everything I write in these ones, um, in all my grimoires, I use color coordinating as well. Not, like, ultimately crazy-like, but red is usually, like, a little bit more of, like, Morning foreboding, and I have it going down the sides on it, whatever else. Um, sometimes if there's plants, I'll try and redraw the plant, so just for, just so people can see. Mm -hmm. but like, name, it'd be here, and then these are, like, the ways to do it, reading it vertically down. But that's some of it. But yeah, no, um, I separate it entirely. If there's stuff that shouldn't be done, I'm not going to exclude it because that's just ignorance. That's not learning. Um, and I think it's a big separation of power. Uh, I, I forget what the actual saying is. It's something along the lines of, like, if you want to see a man's true character, give him power, or some, some stupid thing like that. It's like, hey, give him the information and see what he uses or how he uses it. Um, so kind of the same thing. Like, if I expose you to everything, can you control yourself to contain, to not do the things you shouldn't do? 
It's kind of the same concept. So I have everything in there, but they're very foreboding and worn. On yeah. Yeah. I struggled with that this week. What? Having all the power to do something and having to tell myself not to. Oh, I've been petty for like the last month at work, so you just go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Not for life. I was using some... Uh, what I wanted to do would not have been good for anybody. Especially since your house doesn't have insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hell, dude. That just made it worse. So, backstory, I, just, I found out today, or yesterday, that I haven't had house insurance for like a fucking month and a half. Nobody told me. So yeah, that was fun. Um, I think that we recorded that part already, so I feel bad for like outing you like that. <laughs> that was <laughs> already no, 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 this is important. Like that, or you're like, oh, I'm a dick. Okay, no, 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 you're good. It's actually important because this gives the listeners and viewers or whatever an insight into yes, we're Gothar. We do this shit. We know all these things. But dumb shit still happens to us. We're still people. Yeah. Like, we're still going through all the same crap that y'all are. It's that, it's that Midgard level shit that Gothar are not used to dealing with. <laughs> like, yeah. we're for real. Uh, yeah. If you, uh, if you give me some, like, magical shit or, you know, you just tell me to counsel someone, oh, I'm right on that. You ask me to pay my taxes? No. I don't fucking know. I, mean, I, don't, I don't. I don't pay them out of respect of the war we fought against them. Thank you. <laughs> no, um, you know what you said, Sigvidir, about having to check yourself and you know power and make sure you don't tempt or uh, get tempted by greed in that aspect, in some sort of an aspect. Um, you know, we we permanently all three of us we permanently have this position of religious leader in that aspect like it automatically comes with a sense of power and entitlement but at the same time we have to check ourselves constantly to make sure it's one for the good reason like why why am i doing this still all right you know recite the oath that we took um figure out why we love what we do and you know go from there um but it like it humbles us and it's like if anything it makes us harder to get tempted by power because we constantly have it but we're continuously checking ourselves to make sure we don't flaunt it around or abuse it in any capacity. So I think it, it, oh sorry so go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna expand on what I planned on doing because the shit was brutal and I walked into an occult shop here in my local area or witch store, whatever however you want to phrase it. And the per person asked me, they were like, oh is this like a return to sender? And I was like, no. Return to sender doesn't really cut it on this one. They might need one when I'm done. And they were like, oh, okay. And they didn't know this, but I had my hammer on at the time. I'm not wearing it at the moment because it's upstairs on my nightstand and I've been home all day. But I turn around and I go, oh, that's why. You're a Norse pagan. And I was like, oh, yeah, no. Return to sender ain't going to cut it on this one. <laughs> this shit's going to get dark. Like, I found black salt salt from the dead sea i had a friend of mine going to pick up rattlesnake fangs from another person like it it was getting it was getting gnarly so it's all just sitting in my office now and i was like okay nope we're gonna we're gonna pump the brakes <laughs> about to kill a man with magic I can a rattlesnake if you want I think so. that, don't yeah. just go to be better damn it Go to your boots, you'll probably find three rattlesnakes there. Yeah. There are constantly snakes in my boots. You That's and your problem. dark boots. Frickin' murder. Hey. Murder. It's not that they wouldn't murder me. Are you insane? No, they don't. They don't? No, don't play that game. Don't. Don't go there. 
You're just saying they just feed to survive because not on they, humans. Humans oh, bleed and they eat the human. No, oh my gosh, oh, I'm gonna go fucking Shark Week on your ass right now. <laughs> As I was in shock week. I survived it. It was basic training, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, more people die from hippos and alligators combined, like tenfold, compared to sharks. Do you know why? Well, hippos, <laughs> hippos kill the most amount of humans in the world. They're, and no one fucks with a hippo. Dude, hippos are dope. That I want a hippo bottom is for Christmas song. Is this like <laughs> you want your house bombarded by bombs? So like it'll eat everything and everyone. So, so do you know why hippos kill more people? Yeah, they're territorial as fuck. No, 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 no. Because a big people try and go love them. I know. Nobody people... runs around trying to hug sharks, dude. People do actually. You people, stop it! I mean, technically, if you go pet a manta ray, you're petting a shark. No. Yes. That's why I'm with a dolphin, yes. and I kissed it, and its name was Lucy. Oh, a, a lot. Uh, some people do uh, die from dolphins too. A lot of people get roped by dolphins. Yeah. No, if you pent up Lucy was fine. She was not that kind of doll. She <laughs> uh, was a hitman or a whore. It was actually I actually did call her a whore out loud in front of like thirty people. So I was swimming with a dolphin, right? My brother and I were swimming with a dolphin like brother. And we're just like, yeah, and you learn to dance with them, so you spin in circles like a jackass, and but they actually look cool. And so I was like, ah, and there's one dolphin named Lucy, and I was like, Lucy, and so we danced this whole thing and and then they're like, give him a kiss. I was like, oh, shit. And so I put my lips down. And she kissed me. And then she turned and kissed my brother. And I called her a whore out loud. <laughs> I was like, you fucking whore. And she was from Guatemala. I was like, hey, you fucking whore. <laughs> no one laughed but my brother. And he almost went out laughing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Don't Dolphins. say that. All I'm saying is, a lot of people don't realize hippos are dangerous. Everybody knows that sharks are fucking dangerous. So no, nobody runs around they aren't. trying to pet sharks. Not all sharks are dangerous. I get sand sharks generally are not. And sadly, that's what those boots are made out of. But whatever. They're like, I just want to be loved. I'm like, I just want to wear you. Like, oh. So uh, black deep, like most of the sharks out in the Gulf are friendly. Now you got Makos, which I wouldn't fuck with them because they're the one of the fastest fish in the world. Um, you got whale sharks. Just saying, swim swim with some whale sharks. Uh, you got nurse sharks, which fun fact they're the only shark that uh can be stationary and not die. Every other shark hey. has to swim to breathe. Hey, uh, Brian Raven. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are sharks dinosaurs? Yes. Is that why you know so fucking much about sharks? That and crocodiles. <laughs> Dude, this motherfucker at the, uh, where do we go? At, um, what's the museum? The dinosaur what? museum. The dinosaur park, the dinosaur yeah. park in Utah? Man, we found that fucking crocodile head or whatever the fuck, and he about came. And then <laughs> it was a glory. He loved that experience. <laughs> it was great. Oh, oh, yeah. Something about magic. That's where this whole fucking thing took off. Uh, so, I want to take it back to that. Me and Rain Raven, but I like one talking of our about dinosaurs. Year, apprentices, one of our students, created a bind room for an assignment. What did he say? I didn't even fucking hear him. I like talking about dinosaurs. I know you do. Anyways, one of our apprentices came up with a bind rune for an assignment to attempt to help a household. It's all hypothetical. We just, part of the assignments of learning magic and understanding those kind of things is actually doing it. So, came up with it. 
we all, all three of us, were looking at it going, yep, that should work. That looks great. And it did. I was happy. I felt safe. But oh my God, I thought I was going to die. I got so vehemently sick for the two days that I had that in my wrist, testing it out. Because I'm not going to go hand this to some random person and be like, here, draw this on yourself for the next week. Be my science <laughs> experiment. Now, give me a couple <laughs> years and I might get to that point. But I just think they're like walking away, turning out corny, and they're like dead. What are you talking about? That's going to be your apprentices. I know. It's great. Your princes are going to be your guinea pigs. I know, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Then I can stop doing this shit to myself. But you love it. I do. I love doing this shit. But anyways, even though a bind room looked correct, good to have worked. Like, everything the theoretically should have fit flawlessly. Shouldn't have been an issue. There was still an unknown side effect. So, here's my word of warning. Again, fucking bind runes and saves, since we've been talking about them a lot. Tread carefully. You never know what could be a side effect of that bind rune or save. And this is one of the few times I would actually say, in this way, in what we're talking about, find a mentor a lot of times the go be it's the religion it's our faith you find your own way of doing things it's your own self it's you know the gods for the few not for the gods for the many whatever else these things if you can find somebody that is practiced at least doesn't have to be a freaking swami or whatever else but has fucked around and found out a little bit this is particular subject matter is a big deal to find someone to help educate you um, it's not a bad thing. It's a much more preferred thing because you get hurt less. So lean on people that you know or reach out to those that you can reach out to, including us, and don't do not do it alone because it has bad consequences. Okay. Put this in context, too. Even my chaotic ass had a mentor when I was starting to do this shit. Did I listen all the time? No. I still did crazy shit. <laughs> Just so you guys know why Wolf was that mentor for a little while. <laughs> yeah, both of you. Both of you were my mentor. And I think I turned out <laughs> eh, a okay. Oh. I still did dumb things. Intentionally. Even though he was like, don't do that. And I was like, hey, shut up. I'm going to do it anyways. It's okay. I found a way to passively tame his ass, and then he found out later. That was a thing dirty that... trick, you fucked up monster. I didn't expect someone to run a fucking seminar on the subject matter. <laughs> like, it wasn't something else like, this is gonna be great. Worked like a charm, super chill, very good vibes. And then he's like, I'm gonna take this seminar about this, and like, fuck. <laughs> and I was like, he's gonna find out. And he did. And he let me know immediately. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck, man? I was like, yep. Yeah, I figured that would work. <laughs> so guess what? Fuck around, find out. Shit works, even if they, people don't know it works. It's great. Um, oh, I don't know where it is now. I went and got more of the material that you used, and I still carry it around with me sometimes. But it was just, I didn't know what it was. So, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, but no, do uh, seek out mentors, seek out helps with this type of stuff. Um, I mean, you can do all you want on your own, but it's the whole reason we do this or reach out to others or exist as a community is you can do a lot on your own, but you can't do everything. Um, I know I've said it before, but yeah, there you go. Uh, I know I've said it before, but it's it's the saying, you know, if you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together. Uh, you can you can get some mileage for sure, and you can make a fuck. You can break records on how quickly you acquire a piece a piece of knowledge or something. But without a community, somebody to help you with it, you're just a guy that found a thing. That's it. But 
magic is fucking weird. I just picked these up and my nose cleared out and my voice fixed itself for the most part. <laughs> hey, Rain Raven. Yeah. Still got those headaches, bro? No. Okay, cool, because I have an answer now. <laughs> no, um, what I'm thinking is like, uh, you go to a trade school. You don't go, like, you can woodwork, you can plumb, you can be an electrician to an certain extent, but without someone to help teach you the ways of to do that trade or, you know, help you progress as a mentor in that aspect. That's where we are the resource for you when it comes to that or anyone in general, when it comes to like community aspect and everything, it's better, you know, I, I practiced alone and I didn't reach out to anyone for several years. It's 10 times better practicing with other practitioners than practicing alone. Cause in the end you feel like in my head, I felt like I was crazy. Like I didn't know what I was doing. And like now I'm like, shit, the stuff I was doing was like pretty spot on. Now I don't feel crazy. Yeah. I had a similar experience. Yeah. I think a lot of heathens end up with that same similar experience. Like when you first start this, you take your fucking nuts. Like a kid, you, like I remember sitting there, I was 16. I was laying in bed one night and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Do I even know what I'm doing? Or am I doing this out of spite, like for my Christian upbringing and everything else? I was like, no. No. Fast forward to now and I'm like, holy shit, that kid was smart as hell. He was just doing shit and making it work. So yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. There's a very adorable borderline suicidal star that says, oh, fuck, what is it? I just had it. Uh, oh, no. Oh, are you talking about the one from Mario? Yeah. Yeah. Life is bad. It's, it's is bad. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a world of insanity, the sane seems insane. Yeah. So, like, if you're living in a world of insanity and you're the sane one, you're the insane one in a world of sanity to them. But that's how it feels growing up as a like, or venturing down this and being a goat. Like, even to this day, I'm doing stuff. I'm like, this seems like it's borderline. <laughs> and then I like do it, and I'm like, okay, hey, I guess that's no. there's a, well, the, the borderline's a little bit further forward now. Cool, awesome. Arguably, we both know me and White Wolf. I don't know if Brandon ever knows this person yet or not. We both know a couple of graybeards that if they heard the kind of shit that I do, they would go, no, you're fucking crazy. What are you doing? So, yeah. I, had, I had one of those do that to me. Yeah. And swear an oath to never deal, do business with me again. <laughs> well, the guy that took my oath, that was intense. But yeah, no, we fuck around and find out too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I almost said some fucked up stuff. Never mind. No, I'm going to say that. Well, we do this so you don't have to. And everyone says that, and everyone's like, yeah, but I should learn it. Like, you should learn it. You should learn it from a tenured person. Someone that has found out from fucking around. That's Maybe or, that's on the contrary, I think fucking around and find out is the best teacher. And... But I think having someone to hold your hand to an extent is the safest option to fuck around and find out. Or like if you fuck around and find out, then you have a resource or a person to go back and be like, this is what I experienced. Help me digest this. It's like skydiving tandem. Yeah. You're jumping out of the plane, but there's someone right fucking there. And when you hit the ground, you go, did you see the goose we hit? And there's blood. <laughs> uh, I think going back to that little star from Mario, I think my favorite line from that fucking movie is that little star when he's lowering into the fucking lava. He goes, ah, the sweet release of death. 
Yeah, we watched that yesterday. And then it starts going back up and he goes, boo. No. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wicked dark and I love it. <laughs> Everything's better with saxophone. Do, 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 yeah, do. plays a saxophone. <sighs> anyway, anyway, okay. Originally, yes, I would say drawing a bind rune or a rune does have residual power from the existence of the bind rune or rune itself, but it depends on who does it as the conduit. That's the only thing that really matters, in my opinion, on any of it. Because I could have, you know, I could have a... a rune that hasn't been bloodied and it's not like if freya showed up she couldn't fucking cast that thing so there's not the step-by-step -step criteria it's the conduit or the person using that room right or my room. i agree with that i agree with that but in the particular instance of drawing it on yourself technically i would argue that that is a blooded rune at that point I would agree if it's tattooed, but not drawn. Um, drawing is just an effigy. It's like putting on a piece of paper. Sure, it's there, but it's it's fading every second because of what you're wearing or whatever else. I would say yes to the tattoo because of the dermal piercing that it does to a degree. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I'm still thinking about it, but I'm still on the fence. Like, I think tattoo would be the same equivalent of blooding a rune, but like drawing a bind rune stave on you would have a lesser effect. Like how I described, you get 10% of the energy versus 100% of the energy. That's why like it was, that's why we had minor in the long scheme of things, minor yeah. uh, side effects. When in real, when we thought it would be like, oh, this could be freaking perfect. Like my side effect, I just had an uncurable headache regardless what I did for the whole time it was uh, scribed on me. Like whatever I did, drink water, take painkillers, smoke, drink, literally eat, whatever. My headache would not go away. And one of the runes, um, the main anchor one is the one that, uh, can cure head problems. So. Yeah, it was weird. I don't was. know what to do with that. And I've got a few ideas, but yeah. I mean, I brought it up and it was like, maybe figure out what the, that was a short term side effect. I wonder if it's just, uh your body fighting a unwelcome guest i'm not sure it's kind of the thing of i need to fuck around and find out i don't know i when we did it with him i mean it got him what he was looking for real damn quick in that pinch because it served his purpose like he created it we looked at it recreated it and it served his purpose, right? He was looking for employment or whatever else, and within 30 minutes of us manifesting that, it got him that thing, or the options of that thing. So I think the bind rune, again, it, it's, you gotta be careful with them because they might be tailored to one person. Yeah. Like that could be his, he did that, and it was it exactly what he wanted, exactly what he sought out for it to do at that moment. For us, or for whomever else, it had different effects because it wasn't intended for you. Which is super weird. And that's a weird concept because... Uh, but it also goes into my opinion that the runes are beings or, in essence, a living essence of something and they have their own thoughts and wills and everything else so maybe i don't know i'm gonna fuck with it more yeah. don't do that not advised but i'm gonna keep fucking with it until i can figure out a way to make it work no and like on the the runes being beings having their own minds and everything it just 
why individuals have different relationships with their runes. It's the same with the gods. Right. If anything, the runes are more primordial than the gods because they've been here uh, for past cycles and they will be here for future cycles. Yeah, the runes are constant. The gods are temporary. I agree. That's, yeah. Hmm. Uh, the wild hunts a mother. I don't know how much time we have. How much time we have? The wild mother. Oh, mother. I. I have. I've been learning how to combat and or avoid the wild hunt. This one has been pretty good for me. Uh, and it usually good. just kind of bends me over and doesn't even spit on it first. Like, <laughs> like this is a good one. Like, I think I, I think I'm, I'm too old. I think I'm figuring out how to handle this wild hunt shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to say that sounds so condescending because you guys have been terrible times, but like. I've been very cautious about what I do. I've been more cautious now than I have ever um, in my professional life and personal life. And I think it happened during the wild hunt time. And it's been like really paying off to change my mentality toward a few things. It's kind of cool. Like change your mentality as what you should do in the future or just it for the wild hunt in general. Um, I mean, a little bit of both. It's more on like how I carry myself and what I expect my expectations of myself um you know like what can i accomplish if i handicap myself to this degree and i say okay i'm still able to accomplish more than what's expected of me so then i saw the excess and said okay what am i wasting this on and how much further they're putting me it's not putting me any further it's just exhausted resources so now mm -hmm. I want to reel back all of the actual energy I put into it and then just kind of say, okay, I'm not going to hit status quo. I'm going to do X amount more. But I, it's been like, you know, if I, if I can live during the wild hunt in a hovel, why shouldn't I be able to live as fruitfully or fiscally or whatever in that hovel when it's not the wild hunt? Like, what's stopping that? Except for me. Yeah. It's warmer. You want to be outside. You want to do things. But like learning to mentally and budget in your own physical sense or energy budget, you there's a lot during the wild hunt you can learn that you can kind of cut off. And you don't have to pay, you don't have to do nothing with it, but you can reserve all that energy and bring it into still being better than the rest. Fuck it, just say it, do it. Um, but not having to blow it out of the water and just exhaust yourself. Like if you're better than somebody, you don't need to exhaust yourself to do it. You just do it. And it's gonna be like that. Like I'm trying to be better than myself. So if I see my past self, I'm like, look at this frivolous idiot doing X, Y, and Z for really the same effect that you could get X, Y, and Z. At the end of the week, if you still can't put gas in your fucking truck, then what is it all for? And so the wild hunt has been like a really good time for me to really keep my head down. And arguably, this is the least amount I've ever traveled during a wild hunt. It's only been like four or five times. Um, like over my health, health, um, that timeline, but it's been the, the one I've traveled least and learned the most about myself on how I can be better. And I think that's kind of a big point of it is, you know, during Yule is the idea is to keep your head down, look inward and live with yourself, see yourself and recognize I'm with me and this is all the energy I need or all the things I need and not be so frivolously taken by all the extras that come with summer. It's like working anyway. uh, smarter, not harder. Yeah. And I mean, you know, still working hard. Like I, I still have aspirations and goals. I've just found ways that I can stay on that same route and not have to exhaust myself so much. It's been weird. Yeah, no, like, um, Speaking like of the wild hunt, I'm having a pretty shitty one, but my last three ones looking back have been pretty shitty. Like I've had drastic life changes that but just in the last three, including this one, but I've learned from myself of how to, you know, it's a life lesson. It's something I didn't ask for, but it, 
in the end made me a better person. Like, it's it's been different. It's really been different. And it's... Honestly, I'm kind of grateful that the Wild Hunt had this effect on me. And... Thankfully, I haven't been uh, picked to be a part of the hunt. Um, I'm still here, but I'm grateful of the, the chaos that the wild hunt brings to well, that, us. That's what I was yeah. saying. It's for you, it's like you didn't get targeted by the wild hunt, but you were in their path and got knocked around by him and came out shiny. Yeah. So. I'm. I feel like I've been fucking targeted this time, and I'm just trying to scrape through. Like this shit's rough this year. Like I've had dreams of wolves howling and fucking horses. Like, no shit. Rut row raggy. Yeah. A little foreshadowing. So you want me on horseback is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luckily, I have a car. Um, <laughs> well, is a uh, is the car just the the metal version of horseback? Yeah, but it goes faster. Speed is relative. Yeah, you buy a <laughs> if I die, I want you all to know it's these two's fault. Okay, okay, cool. Probably. Now I had a some effect into it. <laughs> Oh, I gotta change my will. Shit. Go oh, from the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I need to write one. Yeah. I don't think I have one. We should all probably get this figured out. <laughs> Why? It's not my problem. I'm dead. <laughs> We're just uh, chilling with the gods, and yeah. it's our, it's our <laughs> loved ones' <laughs> problem. I'm already drinking one on the top of fucking Bifrost and being like, all right, so the next life, I'll be doing this again. So, like, next time, bring the board up. Cool. <laughs> Good shit. Ugh. But, you know, it's, it's the end of the holiday season. And there's... I'm thankful, but also sad. I like the holiday season. Even if I don't celebrate all the holidays, but I love the the camaraderie that comes to it. Can't stand the bastard thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have one thing about it. I like one thing about the holiday season, and it's snow. Rain Raven, how often has it snowed here? Zero. This year. It snows uh, in April, okay? Chill. I want it to chill. No here either. I That's... know that. Oh my gosh. I got pictures from the farm. Yeah. No snow there. Crazy. Craziness. Global warming? So, question mark? That's the only thing I like about the end of the year seasons is the snow because I fucking snowboard. Outside of that, it's garbage. And there's no snow this year, so guess what? It's just garbage. <laughs> No, like you and your significant other had a good time just doing some R and R and embodiment of what Yule is about, which is being with your loved ones, your and being appreciative of all the hard work you've done and um see how far you've come during this cycle. Oh, no, yeah. And, like, for Yule, we cooked a Yule-themed dinner every night, did a whole bunch of stuff during the day, like, every day. For, like, it was, like, we did it, I think we actually did it for four days, but the three days were kind of the focus. Um, and that was really great. I still want snow. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. I I enjoy a good snow day. Doing some snowman. Uh, no, I, and maybe, maybe I came across saying I hate this season. Like, I hate Yule, I don't hate Yule. <laughs> How people are around this time. It might be that I run retail locations, you know, a little bit. Probably. It might be, 
Yeah, it's it is. I think it's your um, line of work. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my profession is awful during the holidays. Um, but no, uh, I mean, I, I love you all. It's it's always a good time. I'm I'm curious to see how many people in our school and uh, our society did a Yule log or how that went with them. Yeah. I didn't. I'll be honest. What? That didn't happen this year. A Yule log? Yeah. Like Next a, year I will though. Because I'm actually gonna fix my fucking fireplace so it's a wood burning fireplace. Okay, okay. I was gonna ask like a traditional one or a uh a spiritual Yule log. I lit a fire. I did too. Mine was a gas know. fireplace, but uh no, me and my wife uh and our kids, we you know I made dinner and then uh, sat around the fireplace. I read the the creation from one of the our it's titled Norse mythology by for kids by Nordis Nordic Vandig or something like that. He's a scholar. Um, it's a beautiful book, beautiful illustrations. And I was like, you know what? I want to read this for them. So we did, and. Uh, oldest his attention span wasn't holding so i made it extra fun i was animated when it came to the words and everything um and then i gave a beautiful offering and i felt happy it's i don't know it's like when we first started it was a conversation of i don't want to do it but i know i will want to do it and i'll be grateful that i did it like putting yeah. all the the time and energy into cooking cleaning hosting it's a pain in the ass but you would we only have so much time on this realm and let's try to enjoy as much as we can while we're here i agree it was fun though. We had like thirty people at our house, so that was fun. So no one could walk around. Got it. Did you guys do like uh, activities or anything, or would you leave? Uh, they did the white elephant style thing, which was cool. Um, I don't remember. I was drunk. <laughs> Immediately after Stumble, I drank an entire bottle of mead and then started drinking Pendleton and Coke back to back to back to back to back. So I don't remember much. Good night, though. Just remember the Havamal, is what I would say to that. I was in my own home. The Havamal still says something about being a good host. I was a good host. Clearly. They were all fed, they were all warm. <laughs> They all had liquid and fluid to drink, that's, whatever they chose. That's true, that's true. I was a good host. Don't come at me with the hall mall, motherfucker. I, I mean, swear. I mean, something about uh, excess drinking and... Hall mall could be twisted into be a an attack on many different fronts, but it shouldn't be used for that purpose, so I'll calm myself down. Uh, ours was good. It was pretty chill. Like I said, it went for a couple days. Um, I started by looking at the the shortest day poem or story. I posted in a few different chats. It was good. Uh, first day we did uh, this really big ass fucking roast. Um, I don't even remember if that was the first day. It, it was a it was a blur, but it was good. We ended up um, buying a couple records we've been looking for for a long time, like uh, vinyls. And uh, we repotted her plants. Um, so her plants are all big and her pots are all small. And so uh, I have this this uh, tray, like a serving tray. It's, um, it's like the top or bottom of a wine or a, a cask or a barrel uh, with the metal around it, whatever else. And it's made to be served. I never use it because it's one of the, one of the teams in the NFL that I absolutely can't stand. And it wasn't meant to be that team, but when we ordered it, it came something different. 
And so that has nothing to do with it except for a side joke that I said during it. So we literally uh, filled the serving tray. Like, so it's a bottom of a barrel, and we just filled it full of her soil because she has soil and all that stuff. And we like repotted her plants in her own little way, and we're gonna put little like buildings and shit in it. So it was kind of kind of it, it was kind of cool because they were dying and had to get to a new place. So during Yule, it kind of felt like this like transfer of life or a transfer of like one little you know flower pot to another. Um, outgrowing your base, outgrowing the flower pot, and having to get new soil, new base, larger scale, because you're outgrowing who you are. And so that was a kind of a cool thing. Like while we were doing that, I was like, oh shit, like that kind of worked out. Um, but mostly we got high. Um, but it was good. It's good. Good stuff. Yep. Well, that's how Yule went for us. Uh, Feel free to write down below on how your Yule went, if you celebrated, or how, in general, how your holiday season was. And uh, we're going to keep this episode a little short because it's holiday season. Let's get back to our families and keep on enjoying the season while it lasts. Thank you for listening to the New Upsala podcast, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.